Oh, you know what? Hey, Goldies. <laughs> I think the whole time I never added my audio to the screen. I don't know. Can y'all hear me? Give me some comments and let me know if you can hear me real quick. Can y'all hear me? Well, I see my my audio bubble moving. So I think I think I'm okay. Okay, good. All right, so I'm just gonna get into it. Okay, I'm gonna figure out my music for next time for tomorrow. Okay, but I wanted to honor my commitment and come here tonight okay um for a little chit chat okay um first off let me say my girl the prize is not with me tonight um but i appreciate her for um trying to like calm me last night you know um because I was really <laughs> surprised by the response um, to that petition and to some of the comments that the guys made. But let me say, all right, that I meant what I said. Okay. I meant what I said. And I meant every word of what was written down in that petition. And there's proof and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, Goldie is not scared. Goldie is not going back on her word. It is what it is. Um, You know what? I'm going to give you my email, Gigi. I want you to send them to me so I can see them myself. Okay. Yeah, send them to me. And for CJ, um, CJ asked earlier, where can you find the petition? I will link the petition to this video as well. What up, Rude? How you doing? I'm surprised you over here too. I, I didn't even know that you were sub to me. Um, but it's good to see you um over here. So yeah. I'm surprised by the response to the petition. I mean, listen, like I said, I made that petition two months ago and I shared it to my small social network and I had about 150 signatures or something. I don't know. And I just sat it there and forgot about it. The reason why I made it was because I wanted to show the ladies in my little network that you don't just have to sit and complain about the um, ill treatment from men, right? You can actually actually do something about it. Okay. And my way of doing something about it was writing this petition. Okay. I didn't think that it would do anything significant, but it was something that I have within my power to do. And that's what I did. And I just left it there. I need to link Cassandra's video, but until Cassandra made the video a couple of days ago, um, you know, the petition kind of had just been sitting there collecting signatures, you know, little by little over the past couple of days. It's been blowing up and it's about 1,500 signatures on there. OK. And um, as I stated yesterday, the petition is not about Kevin, the individual per se. It's about his followers and how they bring his words to action, how they bring his words to life. And, you know, in, in our day-to-day -day living, okay? That's what I'm focused on. I want to say that that petition was that petition was a success the moment I pressed send and sent it over into change.org, okay? If nothing ever materialized from it, it, it was still a success because I put it there. It's not about um, stopping Kevin from getting more subscribers or getting more subscribers for myself or none of that. It's about women knowing that we do have the power to effect change and women knowing that we do have the power to like take a stand and call out behavior or treatment that that we just don't appreciate and that we can consider dangerous um 
and and that is affecting us like we can say something about it all right so that was just my opportunity to say something about it i said something about it and i meant everything that i said about it okay i'm not going back on anything that i said all right um so let's see so today what we are talking about is black men waking up from these videos that i've been watching and that um i've been hearing about all of this conversation about the petition and everything um you know for the last few few months i've been hearing black men saying um we're waking up we're waking up and you know black men are waking up and demanding more from women and it's so ironic that what black men are waking up and demanding from women is um no weave let me see i wrote it down the things that i've been hearing and reading about um no weave um, black women being overweight, black women wearing too much makeup and not caring about the education that black women have um, secured while they were sleeping. OK, um, you know, black men fail to realize how dumb a lot of the stuff that they say is. But no other race of men have the privilege to be sleep for 40 and 50 years okay and then wake up all of a sudden one day and demand that the women that have been carrying the race for carrying the entire race or the entire culture for the past 40 or 50 years somehow demanded those women um, lose weight or look more appealing and attractive to them. Don't wear weave or adorn themselves. Don't wear makeup and um, basically put those women down for the education that they have attained while these black men slept and slumbered. Okay. No other race of men have the liberty to be sleep for 40 or 50 years like black men have. Okay. Black men always sit around talking about how how everything is so hard and they have it so tough, but they have admitted to waking up in 2021. They are waking up in 2021. What have they been doing since the 60s? They have been sleeping since since the 60s and 70s. They have been in a deep sleep for 40 years, for more than 40 years. And they don't understand the privilege that they have in that. Just to be able to sit there and say some ass and some some stupid, just some dumb ass stuff like we're waking up after the the race the culture has been advanced for 50 or 60 years they don't understand the privilege in that my question is my question is what are black men waking up to all right black men say they are woke now after 40 or 50 years what have they awakened to all right what i see is what I see is they have awakened from their slumber with, um, let me see, the results of their, their awakening has resulted in them whining online, okay, fussing and crying about a whole bunch of things that they have within their power to change, all right? They have been um, just spreading their... Um, displaced emotional energy all over the internet. Okay. In every facet of social media, you can find a black man whining or crying about something. All right. Complaining about um, their women, complaining about other men, complaining about how they can't do anything about their circumstance, yet offering no solutions, not putting any plans in place to make their tomorrows better. In fact, black men have been waking, have awakened um, after 50 years of slumber, and they want to go back to life 50 and 60 years ago. One thing that's always so funny to me 
is, um, you know, since we were talking about um, Kevin Samuels all the time. One thing that's always so funny to me, like people don't understand that he is like a senior citizen. <laughs> People don't understand that he's a senior citizen because he talk about dating 20 year olds. You know what I'm saying? But if you really listen to what he says, like all of the people, the historical figures that um, Kevin references, they're all like people that are senior citizens, 60, 70 years old. Talking about um, Foxy Brown. What's her name? Um I can't even remember that lady's name. Foxy Brown back in the black exploitation films. He be bringing up people like um, Nat King Cole and Etta James and Steven Seagal or something like people that we don't know nothing about. Right. All of the people that they pull on from reference are people from 50 and 60 years ago. The black man has been asleep for 50 and 60 years. And now that he has awakened, he is stuck in a time warp from 50 and 60 years ago. That's where the black man's mind is. OK, so. What has happened in the black community while the black man has taken his privileged rest for the 50 and 60 years um, that he's been sleeping for? Right. I wrote down a few things. All right. One thing that has happened during the 50. Oh, I'm I'm, real, I'm probably going to be on probably for like 10 more minutes unless I got some some. um some questions or some dialogue. I don't have a whole lot of time because I can't be on here that long. Okay. Um, so maybe like 15 minutes. Um, but, um, but I'm coming back in the morning. Okay. In the morning, I'm going to be talking about, um, if black, I'm going to be talking about how black women's Black women are so used to dysfunction that we cannot identify abuse. We don't even know what an abuser looks like because we are so used to dysfunctional relationships. Okay. <laughs> no, Gigi, girl, you did enough. Okay. You did enough. Girl, I actually found an article today. Somebody wrote an article about that petition. I'm going to have to go ahead and um, share that petition now because now that um, it's getting more signatures and all of that type of stuff, we may as well go ahead and get as many signatures as we can. Okay. Because it's out there now, you know. So since it's going, we can go ahead and. and Let's see what it's going to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, what you email me is fine and, and I'll catch up with you in the email. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, but that's fine. Thank you so much, Gigi. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow we're going to be talking about um, how black women have become so used to dysfunctional relationships that we cannot even identify um, abuse, emotional, physical, mental abuse. Like we don't even know what it looks like. We have become friends with abuse. We have become friends with abusers. And that's why so many black women have a hard time identifying what's happening on social media, what's being perpetuated by a American black men on social media as abuse. It is emotional and mental abuse. And they have no idea that that's what that's what's happening to them. They they have no idea. But anyway, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. But anyway, um so in the 50 or 60 years that black men have been sleeping, um, what has happened? All right. Men of other races have built the infrastructure. They have changed the technology of the world. They have um, set um, set the the tone of society. All while black men have been sleeping. Okay, because now in 2021, black men are just now waking up. This is what they're saying. We're we're waking up, right? So now that they are. I'm saying that 
No, I'm saying that black women have been subjected to dysfunctional relationships so much that they don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. Okay. Because for a black man to have been sleeping for 50 or 60 years, black women had to find some normalcy in the fact that they were living life without the provision, the guidance and the direction of black men. And that within itself is dysfunction. Okay. That dysfunction has been normalized because black men, by their own admission, have been sleeping for the past 50 and 60 years. Okay. <laughs> I'll just take it back to 30 years since we want to talk about 30 years yesterday. For the past 30 years, black men have admittedly been sleeping. That means that black women had to adapt to a dysfunctional circumstance. Okay. They had no choice, okay? Black women had no choice but to adapt, okay? So um, so let me keep going. So black, so men of other races have set the tone for society, have set the rules for society, have set the direction for the people of this society. They've built the infrastructure. They've laid the technology. They have started the, um, the, the business enterprise. They have um, monopolized so many different facets of business to where black men have made themselves almost a worker people. That's all they have, because one thing that we have um, that we understand from the popular rhetoric that's like permeating the YouTube spaces is that black men don't care about education. So that means that for the past 40 or 50 years, they have not put a focus on education. So they have not been able to keep up with the times, with the swings, with the ebbs and flows of this new culture, of this new system, of this new structure, of this new infrastructure that other races of men have set in place over the past 30 years. All right. That's what black men have done. OK. Black men have dropped to the bottom in almost every category of measure. OK. When we talk about finances, there's this whole high value thing that I will never understand because we know that the majority of black men don't make 100K, period. So they don't qualify for what we consider to be the high value standard. All right. They are at the bottom in terms of finances, at the bottom in terms of productivity, at the bottom in terms of education, at the bottom in terms of um, building infrastructure and ingenuity. They have dropped to the bottom of almost every measurable category you can imagine, at the bottom of health, at the bottom, bottom of building family, at the bottom of leaving legacy, at the bottom of wealth creation, at the bottom of everything. There is almost no category that you can think of where the black man ranks highly, unless, unless we want to talk about their sexual prowess. All right. One day um, on my little three week binge over here, we're going to talk about if black men will ever be more than their sexual organs. OK, because from a black man's perspective, the thing that's most important to him is that he is sexually desired by women of other races. It's not if he's smart. It's not if he's smart, um, if he's smart, if he is financially stable, if he's um, building anything of, of any value. You, if he's leaving anything of any worth to anybody, it's only about if he is sexually desired by women of other races. That's where the black man gets his 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 worth and value from. The average black man gets his worth and value from his sexual desirability, his sexual marketplace value as it relates to women of other races. Right. So anyway. Unless you are um, comparing black men to other men um, in the category of sex, black men rank at the bottom, dead last in everything. And this is after Hispanic Latino communities who have come over here and built 
communities like just built circles around the black man because the black man has admittedly been sleeping for the past 30 years. The black man has been sleeping for the past 30 years and he acknowledges this. He acknowledges that he's just now waking up in 2020 and 2021. This is what the black man is saying in YouTube communities and almost every video you watch. All right. I'm not making this up. This is what they say. Okay. What else has happened since the black man has been in slumber? Um, he has abandoned the post of fatherhood. For these past 30, 40 years while he's been sleeping, who has been raising the children? It's been the black women. The black women that are too fat, too ugly, too unattractive, wear too much makeup, wear too much weave, and think they so damn smart because they went and got the white man's education. Okay, those women have been the women raising the children. And now that those black men have awakened from their slumber, their privileged slumber in 2021, the black man can stand back and say, oh, well, your son only reads at a fifth grade reading level. Somehow forgetting that that is also his son that he fell asleep on for 30 years. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. How can a black man awaken from 30 years of slumber and criticize the product that he went to sleep on? How? He didn't contribute in any way. But yet, most black women, in my opinion, if we want to talk about um, mothers, black mothers that have um, obtained those degrees did so so that they could e escape poverty. OK, they did so so that they didn't have to live in the hood. They didn't do so because they were just genius and also bright and loved education so much. The black women who went out there and got those terminal degrees did so because they knew that that was the gateway into, hey, she, they knew that that was the gateway into the next level of society, right? They knew that that was their ticket in. Right. It wasn't because they just love reading so much. It was because they knew that while the black man was sleeping for 30 years, that she was going to have to figure out a, a substantial way to fund her family, to take care of the child that this man has had gone to sleep on or the children that this man had gone to sleep on. So the only way that she thought she would be able to secure an income that would be able to keep them all afloat was by going to college. And she did that and she obtained degrees and now she has a salary um, that she can support them all on. Right. Because, mind you, for the past 30 years, the black man has been sleeping. OK, he's awake in 2021. But for the past 30 years, he's been napping. OK, now this is what. I got to keep going back to it. This is what the black man has admittedly said. He is waking up in 2021. He is waking up while we have raised the children, moved the culture forward, raised ourselves, okay? Like purchased property, just kept the culture afloat to where we are today to give the black man this opportunity to sleep in and wake up from his slumber. These are the things that we've done for the past 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, while the black man has been admittedly sleeping. Okay. So aside from waking up to men of other races, building circles around them, infrastructures, technology, um, new advancement, um, new systems, new designs, like just setting the tone for the society. Okay. Black men woke up to other races, excuse me, other races of men, like dictating how everyday life goes. All right. They black men woke up to um, their being dropped down to the bottom of every category, every measurable category that you can think of. OK, while they were in slumber. 
that's the um, another thing to happen. Um, and then while they were in slumber, they also abandoned their post of fatherhood. Okay, we went in th into those three things. So now let's talk about what the black man's reality is now that he's awake. Okay, in 2021, now that the black man has finally awakened from his privileged slumber that no other race of man has been able to take for 30 or 40 years. Okay, now what reality is the black man walking into? Okay, his reality is that he loves entertainment. He loves being entertained. Okay, he looks for active avenues to relax his mind and entertain himself. OK, and he finds many of those avenues on YouTube, watching 50, 60, 70 year old men on videos, laughing and joking and uh, <laughs> just having fun at the expense of the black woman. All right. He wastes his time on any and everything in sight. OK, uh, hanging out around the neighborhood, uh, criticizing uh criticizing people playing video games like i don't know they, he just finds leisurely ways to spend his day okay um he focuses uh on deflection making excuses and placing blame on everybody else but himself but taking accountability for the fact that he willingly went to sleep 30 or 40 years ago he's now awakened to the reality of placing blame on everybody else No, I think that it broadly describes Black Americans. I think that it broadly describes Black Americans. When you have a percentage of Black Americans, more than half of Black American men over the age of 35 that are quote unquote single and childless, that is not, um, that describes um, broadly. Okay, that's that's the culture, the Black American male culture. All right, there is a distinct culture that Black American men belong to. There's there is something very unique about how the Black American male functions. All right, yeah, no, it's very. <laughs> it describes it perfectly. All right, let me keep going. Um, this black American male has awakened from his slumber to live in delusion, to live in delusion. Somehow, after 30 or 40 years of being asleep, black man, no, she's just trying to make me stay up late. I am going to, um, I am going to go live again in the morning, okay, because I can't stay up that late. I don't know. I might try it in a second. Let me get finished with my little notes because I'm almost done. Black American men um, are waking up to living in delusion. Somehow, after 30 years of being asleep, what time do I want to do these? These videos? Girl, I just, um, I came in late today because my plan got messed up earlier today, but I was supposed to be doing this video at three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, my plan got messed up, but I wanted to make sure I came up in here to have my conversation on the black man. Since the black man is still sending me stupid um, comments and stuff like that, stemming from that petition, I had to, you know, make sure I honor my word to be here today. But um, I'm going to try to do them closer, like earlier in the afternoon, around three or four, if that's your question. Okay. Um, so he, he wakes up and he's living in delusion. Somehow the black man is wanted and highly coveted by everybody. Um, everybody wants to be like him. Everybody, um, wants to look like him. Everybody wants, um, what he has, which is absolutely nothing. Somehow he's like a trendsetter and like people follow him and men who have worked their entire lives, um, and taken over the legacy of their fathers and their grandfathers somehow want to give their daughter to these men who just awaken from a 40 year slumber. All right. Men, uh, these black men have awakened to the reality that interracial dating somehow gives them um, uh, validity, like it gives them value. 
uh, somehow a woman of another race is better than the woman that has been carrying his own race for the past 30 years while he's been um, nicely tucked in his little bed sleeping. OK, um, he has wake awakened to the reality of competing with his woman. All right. And see, there are several categories that the man can't come. The black man can't compete in when it comes to his woman. Finances are one. Education is another. And family um, stability is a third. Right. And a way to discredit the black woman and her success in those areas. They say your money don't matter. But if you pay attention to on social media, there are always um, are memes and different little scenarios that come up where the man is expecting the woman to step in and pay half the bills or to cover him while he's down and out. Right. If he falls short, then all of a sudden the black woman is supposed to step in and foot the bill until he's able to get back on his feet. Right. They tell you that your education don't matter. We don't care if you have education or not. That's only because they don't have any. Right. And then the children that you've sacrificed and struggled in raising, they tell you that they aren't good enough. They tell you that they aren't smart enough. They tell you that they don't know enough or they can't read well enough, even though that they didn't contribute one thing to this child because they've been sleeping for the past 30 years. Right. And they, they compete with their women by knocking the woman down. That's how they can turn around and tell you that you aren't beautiful, that you aren't worthy of a high quality man, that you won't be able to get someone who will value you and love you, that you have to accept being cheated on. Right. They tell you all these things because if they get you to believe those things, then you will be low hanging fruit for men who just awaken from a 30 and 40 year slumber. OK, um, let me see. OK, well, at least he was being honest. OK, um, all things matter, Jane. At least he was being honest. And you know what? Uh, you know what? Um, here, let me see. Let me go to my um, let me go to my thing. I have never done this before, so I don't know if. I don't know how I can make people um, a mod, but let me see. Let me see. Do I click on it? Okay. So, Gigi, I made you a moderator. And all things Nata Jean, I make you a moderator, okay? She, I will make you a moderator, but I don't know because, you know, you a man and everything. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you love me, but I don't know if you love me, though. You know what I'm saying? So all things Nata Jean and Gigi, y'all do what y'all need to do, okay? Um, but yeah, so um, in order to... You are so welcome. In order to knock down the accomplishments that the black woman has secured, you are welcome too, Gigi, is that they discredit everything that the black woman is. They tell the black woman who, oh yeah, okay, I just got it. I think I did it, shit. Um, they, y'all let me know, y'all block real talk pod box, okay? Because my dress size is good enough, okay? My dress size is good enough. So he all up in my business. They always up in my business. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all can block him, then then we got it. Um, so he criticizes everything. Now, the black woman has been the standard of beauty since way back in, you know, um, Egypt. <laughs> OK, like since way back in the way back. OK, the black woman has been the standard of beauty, but somehow the black man has awakened from his 30 years of slumber, his 40 or 50 years of slumber and somehow realized that the black woman is at the bottom of the barrel in terms of aesthetics. Right. And that's only because he has to find a way to discredit you so that you will still be available to him. All right. Um, so he has awakened to his reality of competing with women and tearing women down. All right. In order to feel superior. OK, I'm going to. I'm finna. I'm going to try this. 
this um, sending a link thing just for you, Sheed, okay? We're going to try it. And you tell me if you get it. And if you get it, you can come on up. This is my first time doing a lot of this stuff, okay? So, let's see. I'm going to um come down around 11.50, okay? Because I still got stuff to do. I just want to make sure that I came in here tonight. So, should you let me know if you get the um the link? And we will go from there, all right? But, um, yeah, I wanted to just take a little bit of time and really talk about the fact that black men are waking up now in 2021. And we need to pat them on the back, okay? Because for them, this is an accomplishment, okay? They, they even think that black women are upset that they are waking up. And, you know, we're not really upset because we want to give them an opportunity to step in their role of responsibility, right? We want to give them an opportunity to kind of take over for some things, right? That's why when women talk about um, getting with provider men or men paying the bills, like we want to give these black men who just woke up after 30 or 40 years of sleep an opportunity to like step in and pay some bills. You know what I'm saying? Spoil somebody a little bit. But I think I have sheet over here. So let me see if I can add a man. Hold on. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, she, are you in? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm to get ready to go home in a minute. Actually, let me see. Can you hear me? I think I put you in, she. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, thank you so much, Gigi. Can you hear me? Let me know, she. Can you hear me? Is my mic working? Let's see. Microphone. Uh, oh, uh, let me see. My mic is working. Oh, wait. Did I get you in? Can you hear me? There might be some on your end. My mic is working. I can hear myself. Hello? I just want to. Oh, there you go. I hear you in your computer. That's, I don't that's know, because I can't hear you, see, unless you mute it. Okay. Oh, you can hear him? Oh, my goodness. Why can't I hear him? See, can you hear me? Oh. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, I can hear you. Unless you have another screen open up or something. I don't know. Well, what you can do I is... See, I'm going to ask you to come up one more time. Okay, hold on. Thank y'all for, um, for working with me on this. Because I can't hear him. Can you hear me now? I still can't hear. Yeah, might have to listen on another device or something. Check your check your um check and see if it's on me. Yeah. Let me, let me type I can't hear back. anything. Yeah, I cannot hear anything, but it says that my um, audio is up. Yeah, it's some on so your I don't know, she. What do you suggest? I like them check these comments. Yeah, got to get another device. Oh, 
Okay. No, I'm not I'm not muted. But my phone is downstairs, so I can't even go and get it. Okay. Well, it looks like I might not be on then. Might have to come back another day. I'm actually working anyway. I just wanted to add some comments to what you were saying, but since you can't hear me, I guess the chat only one can hear me. You know, I really wanted to have, okay, really wanted to have you talking so we can have a conversation, not an argument or none of that, because that's not my thing. See if you can get your mic thing together first before I start talking. I don't want to think I'm disrespecting you or anything on your platform. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know. I'm not on mute. Okay. I um, you admitted you came here because of the petition for Kevin Samuels. Um, not really. Yeah. What do you think about it? Well. I don't know if you can hear me. You probably have to listen on a replay. Um, my far. channel is actually geared towards women. Um, but, I mean, I love to have, you know, guys come and, and, and hang out a little bit. Um, as long as you guys are respectful and everything. Um, but, yeah. You know, the whole Kevin Samuels thing kind of just got real. Right? I'm going to have a conversation with um, some ladies from this uh, YouTube channel called um, The Breakdown, A Woman's Perspective. I'll uh, make another video about that. Um, I'll Sister make another George video about that bro. and link that video, but we'll have... No, Sheet, I'm sorry. I still can't hear you. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I told you you might have to come on mine and we'll probably do one. What to do. <laughs> Actually, open up YouTube on another screen and just put yeah, it on. I don't even know what to do. Uh, can you, can know. She, type in you know, chat, she, what I want you to do is just hold on because I'm in the video in just a second. Um, and then um, I'll start another broadcast or, or like invite you back into StreamYard or whatever and see if we can get it going that way. Okay. Like you can help me figure it out yeah. because you said you you know you cool with goldie and everything so you help go to get her audio together okay <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and take you down now but um cool and then we'll get back together okay in just a few minutes um so yeah most of kevin's callers thank um everybody for for ro rolling with me and she for just a few minutes this is my first time trying a panel thing um but i'm excited to do a panel um because i really would like to hear others perspective and give us an opportunity to kind of dialogue um you know together um yeah, so what I was saying is that I'll be um, on a breakdown with a, a breakdown, a woman's perspective on Sunday. I think it'll be around 9 or 10 a.m. I'll make another video and link that so that y'all can join in on the interview. But we're going to talk about the petition. Um, you know, the petition is a real thing. Like a lot of people are saying that it won't have impact and he won't be removed because of um, his. Okay. Um, they're saying that he won't be removed because of his um, financial contribution to in, to YouTube. But let me just say, you know, um, while his contributions are significant, you know, YouTube makes money in so many other ways. When we talk about hate speech and when we talk about um, emotional and mental and verbal abuse, okay, they can do without. <laughs> All right, like nobody should feel like um, YouTube needs them. All right, if there's a lot of channels on YouTube that have a million subscribers and have engagement and have people super chatting them, so you know, whatever. Um, but since we have some women that support positive messaging for black women being shared on um, 
on social media platforms and understand how dangerous the rhetoric that Kevin Samuels espouses and the the fact that the followers of his ideology go out and make um, his words come to life. Like, um, you know, we just moving ahead with the petition. I meant what I said in the petition, period. I just, I, I meant what I said. I meant what I said yesterday. And it just is what it is. You know, it's no ill intent. There's no harm, you know, intended for Kevin, whatever. The whole thing is about Black women and Black women feeling safe online in the public spaces. YouTube are billionaires, girl. Why do they think, you know, that YouTube is going to hesitate to remove him if it is deemed that that is hate speech? And it whatever. We're going to talk about it on Sunday. So I'm going to put the link in so y'all make sure y'all come join us on Sunday. The petition needs to get in the hands of the creator of the Me Too movement. You know what? Let me get the petition now and I'm going to link it in the chat and y'all do whatever y'all want to do with the petition. Has any violence resulted from KS comments? You know, y'all bro, what do you think? I guess you think no. I guess you think no, huh? Maybe we should check his comments from last week when he said to um, to do the domestic discipline. Maybe we could see, do some research and see how many black women have been domestically disciplined this week. And if any of those black women who have been domestically disciplined died. OK, right. We can see if they've been beat up, slapped in the mouth or whatever he said, knock your teeth out your mouth um, or even suffered from death. Why don't you? Um, Mr. Yarbrough, because I believe you're a guy. Why don't you go ahead and do some research about um, any domestic abuse um, claims or um, cases that have been filed or any deaths that have incurred over the last week to black women? And let's see if we can tie that back to Kevin Samuels. All right. I'm going to give you that task. OK. We need a white woman like Rachel Maddow, Gloria Steinem, and any of those ultra-feminist women. See, let me tell you something. First off, I like Rachel Maddow. Um, I just, I always liked her back when I was in college and everything. But let me tell you something. Those white women took the white manosphere and like ripped it to shreds. They did not allow those socially awkward rejects to paint white women as unattractive, as undateable, as unwanted, as all of the stuff that black men have been sitting on YouTube painting the black woman as for the past two or three years. Like white women were not going for that. They shut down a whole bunch of Manosphere channels, okay? Because white women understand and what um, domestic abuse is, they understand what um, how those uh, violently charged words can make their communities unsafe for themselves and for their children. They understand that. And what they did is that they got together and they put an end to that type of rhetoric being shared in their communities. That's what they did. But see, we have a lot of black women, and that's why we're going to talk about this tomorrow. We have a lot of black women that are so used to dysfunctional relationships that they aren't able to identify abuse. A lot of black women who follow Red Pillars and Kevin Samuels and all of that stuff don't understand that they're being mentally and emotionally abused. They don't understand that they're that these words are violently charged. The words from Mr. Samuels, so, you know, sometimes are violently charged, but definitely the comments, the people who make the comments, the people who actually go out and rub, you know, elbows with the average black woman and the average black youth, those comments are definitely charged in violence. Definitely. All right. And see, white women understood what was happening in their community. Now it's time for black women to be able to identify what abuse is and to find enough esteem and value within themselves to take a stand against it. That's why I, I'm moving forward with the petition. Like I said, I just had it out there and now I wasn't even thinking about it because I, I had 
accomplish my goal, which was making the, the petition two months ago. But once, um, you know, it, it got out to be mainstream or something like that and other people are supporting it, let's push it and see what we can do. Let's use our collective power. Just a year ago or two years ago, we were out here on the picket lines for George Floyd and all of this stuff, you know, protesting and leading, protesting and all of this other type of stuff for George Floyd. Now it's time to lead protesting for ourselves, okay? Because if if y'all don't think that the Black men in our community are being emotionally charged for violence over the things that are being said on the internet, not necessarily from um, Kevin Samuels, but from people who also follow him and other content creators, then like you got another thing coming. All right. Everybody know that the black woman is not protected. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that the black woman is usually operating from a single household. She's she's the only woman or only person, only adult in her household. So they know that there are not men there to protect her. Right. So, yeah. If y'all don't see how those words are making all of us unsafe, then you really need to sit back and like take a second look. OK, that's why we have to put an end to all of this hate speech and all of this lingo because, uh, yeah. Um, you know what? That's the prize, girl. Don't you see that I'm doing better today? But see, the thing is, is you're talking about me and you're talking about you. OK, you said that it depends on the state of mind and why you listen to red pill creators. You say you listen and use their content to your advantage, but other people are not listening and using it to their advantage. What they are doing is using it as an outlet to talk about and promote violence. That's what they're doing. Right. You are thinking about dating men. I'm talking about men who are red pill, who hate women. OK, or I don't want to say they hate women, but they are really upset with women and they want women to pay for making their making their lives miserable. Right. Like they're not trying to date a man like you. <laughs> they out here trying to make women pay. They're trying to make like women not exist. Don't I don't know if you remember cuz you said that you listen to a lot of Kevin Samuels, but um a couple months ago there was a whole conversation around um a world um a, a world being possible without black women even existing. Kevin was saying something about how black men um survived without women because they would be off at war and have page boys that they related with. And the only time that they would have a need for a woman is if they wanted to procreate and create a child. Like, girl, please, they're not thinking about viewing that red pill content in the way that you are. They are thinking about, you know, women not being around. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying that we are going to end it. What I'm saying is that we're going to let our voices be heard and say what we find to be dangerous. And what happens there happens there. I mean, I'm not trying to end anything per se. I'm just trying to say that this this rhetoric against black women is dangerous and it just is what it is. And it needs to be monitored. Like there should not be a platform for this type of speech to like just exist these types of ideas and thoughts to just be spoken freely. You know, people think that freedom of speech is an opportunity to just say whatever it is that you want to say, but words have power and words have consequences. Everybody else knows this except for Black women. That's what I'm saying. Black women, we don't even understand when we are being abused. We don't even see when we're being abused. Um, girls got a gun put out on them because they rejected a guy. It definitely okay, girl. You better not like think that you're gonna be crass when telling a man no. I tell a lot of my girls to be polite in almost everything that you do. Oh, he want to give you his number, take his number and and smile and whatever and throw it away the next minute. You know, 
have an app on your phone that um, is a fake number that rings to your phone so that you can give him a fake number just so that you can get away from him because you never know what this man going to do once you reject him. These men are rejected. They're rejected men. Okay. And they are now being taught that you can discipline a woman for doing something that you don't like. So if you reject them in a way that they don't appreciate, you you might not make it from that situation. Um, yeah, I know it's it's far gone. I feel like with this world of free tech, we are awakened up just like them. I feel like black women been awakened. Black women never had an opportunity to sleep. OK, black women never had the liberty to go to sleep for 30 or 40 years because we had to take care of all the black man's responsibility. OK, we did that. Right. Uh, when I was talking yesterday about people growing up in a um, single parent household, who do you think was raising those children, making sure that it was food to eat every day and clean clothes and the bills were paid and these kids were getting to the bus stop and yada, yada, yada. We did everything. We never had an opportunity to just relax and, and, and be sleep. OK, black women have never had an opportunity to sleep in order to even be awakened. We've been walking through this world where our eyes open wide open since the 60s. That's how those of us who have been paying attention can tell you that what's being said is dangerous. It's dangerous for other little girls. All right. So. um, So, yeah. I don't know, but the prize, I'm gonna go ahead and make you a moderator too. Let me see if I can get back to the channel. Oh. Okay, let me see. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see you ladies tomorrow. And you know what, she? Let me try to add you in one one more time. I'm Central Standard Time. Okay, so you are my. Let me see if I can bring you back in, she, because for some odd reason, okay. Okay, she, can you hear me? I don't know. Can y'all hear him? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Mm hmm It might have might have just been my connection from earlier. Okay. But hey, how are you? Thank you so much for coming up. And thank you for helping me get my first panel going on. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically, you know. There's some things that you said about men being sleep. I mean, like I say, I don't I don't come to bash or harass women, you know. Pretty much I'm married, you know, I don't do all that bashing and trying to threaten and come at women all violently because that's that's not how actual men supposed to be rocking anyway, you know, to the point where the situation at hand, if I don't like something that you're talking about. I either just won't listen to your channel or I just won't follow, you know. And that's what I don't understand with a lot of people now. That's their biggest thing in this space to try to censor people, you know, opinion or thoughts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's your view. So if you view mm -hmm. that way, I mean, to the point where if your opinion becomes fact, then so be it. But if not, then it's steady as an opinion. You know, and to me, I, I haven't heard, I've heard Kevin talking about women getting popped and hit and stuff like that. And sometimes he jokingly said, and majority of the time I've been hearing him saying it as a premise to put discipline and control to women. I mean, mm -hmm. to the point being, that's how a lot of men handled it back in the day, you know, and coming in this new era, that's not generally the, you know, training or mindset of the men, which they try to, you know, most guys are trying to promote going back to it. And I'm like, you know, this is a different day and age. And then, you know, what you're saying, the man being sleep, I mean, you got to define what men, you know, because not all, just, you know, I don't know if you're speaking to absolutes or not, but when it comes down to it, 
Same thing with the women. It's not all. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I'm, I'm not speaking in absolutes because always when I talk about women, I say there's about 13 percent of awesome women. Pretty much 8 percent of them get married. Five percent of them don't get married because, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult task, you know, just like the men who are like you were saying about men not being married, that mm-hmm. half of them, a lot of those guys not married because they haven't picked, I mean, haven't picked or found the right woman. Same mm-hmm. thing with women, you know, women want to get married as well. The mm-hmm. ones that don't want to get married, they just want to, you know, have that hot girl summer or just be, you know, outgoing. Mm-hmm. And to me, if, if she wants to be in that type of mindset or do that, that's, that's her thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear guys always on panels talking about how women um sorry about the noise in the background it's raining Mm -hmm. but uh it's about men always complaining about how women always pick wrong you know she picked the drug dealer she picked this guy and Mm -hmm. majority of the time i tell them i'm like when it comes down to it she picked right that's who she want to be with you can't censor a woman who she wants to be with if she likes the rough guy let her be with the rough guy and if she chooses to come back and be with you that's your option to, you know, deal with her or not. So mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, I I don't push judgment on women that, you know, want to live this life or do certain things as, you know, the new younger girls want to be hot and stuff. But you got to suffer the consequences when you get older, mm-hmm. you know, because majority of the women that, you know, like you were saying, that want these men that have money, uh, men of means and stuff like that they're generally going after them at a young age not waiting to their older years to try to find a husband you mm-hmm. know I mean Kevin in some ways he, he he pretty much tells the truth about that you know when you get to a certain age it's not it's like you're uh, almost pushed out of the dating market you know even mm-hmm. with young young women I mean with older women older women they possibly could get with a younger guy as well but you know, like I said, when it ah, killing me, like sometimes they almost get pushed out of the dating market. And it's it's kind of hard to, you know, get married at an older age, with a, whether it be man or woman. You know, as far as a man, he'll more or less get married kind of quickly because of the money aspect. But even if a woman has money, you know, men kind of steer away from that because they scared that that woman is not going to, you know, take him for being that man because of uh you know she having all the money she she want to kind of you know control the environment and control things you mm-hmm. know you just you just expressed earlier about the women going to college and doing certain things and it's, they just shut down the freaking highway but yeah you expressed earlier about the women going to college and stuff and you know things are going on to where women are taking over doing the jobs but the point of it is those guys are not there because a lot of women shut them out of the household Mm -hmm. you know and to the point where some women some women did have the men in the household they just wasn't acting right you know it's all about choices who who weren't acting right the men or the women in both cases you know there were Mm -hmm. there were situations where the men wasn't acting right and the woman had no choice to put him out but there are in some cases where the man was acting right and the system deemed them better to get the man out of the house because you can get provision from the state. But you know what? See, that's the thing. Like when I was talking about black men waking up, like that is the the thing that that most black men are saying in the comments in these spaces. Right. They're saying yeah. that. Black men are waking up and taking a stand and all of this type of stuff. And the reality oh. is, is that, um, is that if you have been like sleep all of this time, like that's your fault. Like there is no, in my opinion, like t- to say that the the state can pr- provide a better provision than a man in the house is an excuse. Like. And, and it's not reality. 
I understand that guys see relationships differently, but just as like a commenter just said in, in the chat, so many women want to be married, but we have black men that are proud to be single and aren't even thinking about marriage, which means that they aren't thinking about joining a household or leading a household. So there isn't even an opportunity to put them out of the household to get provision from the state. And so many black women don't even qualify for state provision. Like to so to say that they are sending a man out of the house just so that they can get state provision again, like makes no sense because they don't even qualify for it in the first place. Right. It's when I said earlier that the reality is that the black man is waking up with a bunch of deflection, excuses, and placing blame. That's exactly what I mean. That they're deflecting on the black woman and saying that they couldn't live in a household with her and get along with another adult. They're making excuses, saying that um, it was better for him to leave so, so that she could get provision from the state. When if he came into a relationship with good faith or with some honor and integrity, then there would be no room for the state okay and then um placing blame and making it seem as if everything was out of his power you know if black men had been awake for the past 30 or 40 years they would understand that they are the leaders and that they are in charge so that there is no such thing as um as making room for the state or relying on excuses. They would have been working hand in hand with women in securing those degrees, getting that education, starting those businesses, creating some financial stability so that they could both be living in a different situation now. But black men have willingly been asleep for the past 30 or 40 years and they have left themselves, they have gotten themselves to be left behind for the past 30 or 40 years. And like I was saying, black women did not have the luxury to be sleep. That's why black women have these degrees. That's why they have somewhat of the financial stability. And of course, they are going to want to, you know, kind of say how they want to live their lives because but they I, have work to do that. Whereas the black men have been sleeping. But I, okay, okay. As far as the black man awakening, mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of guys say that is because a lot of men they they work till they die, you know, in most cases to provide for the family. The guys who you call sleeping and never did nothing for 30 years, those are the guys that generally were being, you know, pretty much suppressed by the state, being suppressed by the whole quote unquote gynocracy with most men always talk about because quiet is kept. The women raise the boys. So ultimately, if you're raising your son to be a, a great man for a woman, it shouldn't be a problem, right? What What are you saying? I'm saying if women generally, they, they, they're the steward over the kids. Mm -hmm. So when a man is not in the house, a man is not there to teach, that woman has to take on that role to take care of those kids. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And if that woman is raising that young man to be a positive influence in a woman's life, mm -hmm. then as time go on, we have a, a slew of good men. Mm -hmm. And that's what the women were doing. They were raising their boys to be good, good men for a woman, you know, to, you know, to be a good husband. But the stewardship as like with me and my wife, I take that for example. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife work together. You know, I don't, I don't kind of be, I don't belittle her or nothing. I don't try to put her in a situation as, um, you know, I gave her my rib. She needs to respect me. No, to a point, it's not that we're equal because I take on more responsibility than her. True, there's come a time I can't pay a bill and she has to step up and pay that bill for me. But the point of it is, if she's not going to do it, I have to still go do it, you know? When it comes down to it, it's always known that when the lights go off, you look at the man. If the dish is not washed, they look at the woman. And what you were talking about, the men being asleep, like I said, a lot of me, 
I haven't heard <laughs> Sax Smith give um fifty thousand or a hundred thousand, whatever, towards the men in society. You know, have been in men been enslaved the most as far as you know, not being able to read, coming out of slavery. You know, a lot of men taught themselves a lot of things. And traditionally, that's all we had was each other coming out of slavery. We depended on each other at all costs. But the community got broke up because we start we started splitting different ways, you know. Even though that the men back in the day, some of the men were abusive to women. You know, that's that's what Kevin and a lot of guys talk about that. Because when the women would act a certain way, they would so-called say they put them in their place. Same thing with, you know, when it comes down to it, a man had a bad day at the job. He can't cuss out his boss. So if he come home and his wife say something, run him off, you know, just run him off the meter. And some women did it on purpose. I've, I've pretty much talked to older women, even younger women, they do this, you know, because they see it. It's, it's repetitive, you know. If you see your dad, if you see your dad beat on your mom, you know, it's not like that's the norm. You're going to do two things. You're going to either have that same type of relationship with your man or you're going to talk to your man and let him know that you can't be in that type of environment. See, and that's that's what's happening with most people. You know, they're coming from the environment of abuse. They're coming from environments of, you know, neglect. And they're carrying that over into those relationships. Most people, you know, they shouldn't be together, honestly kept. You know, there's men who deal with women because of how their body look and how good they look on the outside. But on the inside, most guys, they, they're not looking at the women for what they can do for them. Like far as, you know, having that family structure, most of the guys might just want to have sex, even with women. There's a lot of women that just want provision and protection for men. But that's what, has a lot of money. that's what a woman is supposed to get from a man is provision and protection. And that's if y'all are, if men are approaching their interactions with women based on their desire to have sex, then that is the man controlling like the direction or like the validity of that relationship. And, and that's his doing only his doing. The only thing a woman can do is deny it or follow along with it. Hey, Raining Woman, thank you so much for joining. Um, Raining Raining Woman. Yeah, right. I'm surprised to see her here. Um, Thank you so much for joining. But that is what a man is choosing to do. And when I talk about leaning on excuses, that's an example of what I'm talking about in terms of leaning on excuses. If your grandfather beat your grandmother, like, you know that that's not like the right thing to do. So why would you go and beat on your your wife? Like, or, you know, like, why would you be okay with that? Why aren't you in therapy? Why aren't you in counseling? Why aren't you trying to create a better dynamic for your own children? Instead of leaning on excuses and like finding ways to, to be able to explain it away. Like what I really feel like is when these black men are talking about the fact that they're waking up, it's like they have willingly ignored their actions over the past 30 years and they are or even more 30 to 50 years and they want to sit back and use a lot of excuses. But there's nothing that can change the fact that the man is the leader for me. The man is the leader of the woman and the child. He's the leader of the household. Now, if he chooses to not lead, if he chooses to not be head of the household if he chooses to not be you know head of the woman and the child that's a choice that he makes on his own but that does not take away his responsibility of holding that title just by being a man he has that title so it's on him to equip himself with the tip with the tools and the skills necessary to be effective in his role regardless of what happened regardless of whatever situation he may have come from it is on him to equip himself with everything necessary to be effective in his role and if he wants to lean on the shoulda coulda wouldas and the reasons why he he is well within 
you know, his ability to do so. But somebody like me is going to call it out and say that you're making excuses. And that's just what it is. A lot of black men are filled with excuses. And in order to mask or camouflage the fact that they're filled with these excuses, they get in these red pill spaces or they go and subscribe to channels like the Samuels channel and sit there and talk about women and drag women down for filth over things that don't even matter, like makeup, like hair, like weight. If you love a woman or you see value in a woman and you think a woman is a good woman, then you as the man, you as the leader of the household, go and work out with this woman. Take this woman to the gym. You know how to cook, cook some healthier meals. You have a better job, order some healthier food. Get her a personal chef to create healthier food habits for her and the children. Don't just discount a woman because she fat. If she's a good woman and makes a good wife, like I feel like black men are so quick to grab excuses and think that other people see those excuses as valid and we don't. We don't see none of that stuff as being valid. If 53% of black men are single and childless, it's because that's what they want. They don't value women. They don't value children. They don't value family. And they want to sit back and make excuses and say that there are no women worthy of marriage when there are a lot of women worthy of marriage. Even some women in the comments say that they want to be married. It's so many women in these red pill spaces that be sitting here lying co-signing with y'all just gobbling up all the dumb stuff that y'all be saying and knowing that it don't make no sense and they saying all of this stuff because they want to be chose by one of y'all so to sit there and say that there are not eligible women there are women that will go out there and speak against their own interests there are women that are saying that domestic discipline is okay just so that they can get a man so to say that these 53% single men don't have any other options, so they have to stay single is more of an excuse. So would you date, a, okay, just like the situation with the men dating um, bigger women. Say it again. I say, okay, we were just, you just said about men actually dating women that are plus size, that are a little heavier or big. And men don't want those type of women because of their weight, right? Mm -hmm. So would you date a man that's abusive knowing that he's abusive? Well, see, that's different because, see, the weight is something that you can work on together, right? If a man is abusive, then he needs to make the decision to go to therapy or whatever it is that he needs to do to change his mental pathology. But a, a weight, a heavier woman, if you are... Um, interested in a wife and a mother for your children and someone that you can create a, a legacy with someone that you can leave some um, you know some wealth to you know whatever it is that you secured in your life and you see that this is a good woman but she 30 pounds overweight or 40 pounds overweight then it's on you to help her be the healthier woman that you can see her to become you know she has yeah. to want to do it herself but you can be there with her to guide her just like a a, a woman who sees a black man who um, who has the education or worked and secured the things that he needs to um, secure in order to lead a good household, but he's a little overweight. This woman is going to cook better meals for him. She's going to work out with him. She's going to support him in, in losing a little weight. She's not just going to throw away a perfectly good man just because he's a little heavy. That's, that's that all are saying that because it's easy and it's an excuse to keep you single and the thing? To make it seem like that there is um, no other reason why or there's no other way that you can um, that you can like get out of your singleness. It's just an excuse. OK, for one, if a, if a man is heavy and a woman is heavy, they chose that type of, you know, to live that lifestyle. A person who sees them, they generally have to be invested in them to see them as worthy of dealing with from that point. You know, if I I was I was date I was dating a girl that was big and she pretty much was she was cute and she was big. But the point of it was, like I told her, there were some things that she had to change about herself. Pretty much was one was her weight because of her health. 
you know? Mm-hmm. And I told her, I was like, that's not a good look. I mm-hmm. mean, the point of it is I liked her, but the point of it was, like I said, at the end of the day, it's not a good look as far as your health wise, because mm-hmm. when you have a child, you're going to get bigger. Mm-hmm. And certain things she didn't want to cut out. So mm-hmm. we pretty much didn't see eye to eye. So the relationship didn't go forth. Mm-hmm. But the point of it is, guys, you don't think most guys try? That's that's why most guys just don't even want to try or deal with women that are big. And the point of it is, if you want to get married and you know your weight is an issue, mm-hmm. why why not cut the weight before you deal with the man? Mm-hmm. So so you so you won't have an excuse. See, women will say this: a man won't date a big girl. But if a, a big girl cuts the weight before she gets with that man, then there's no excuses. Because for one, like I said, if a man is invested in you, whether it be big or small, he's going to work with you through your problems. If if he doesn't want to deal with a big girl, he's not even entertaining looking at a big girl. And you can't fault that man for that. Just like I explained to you about being with an abusive man, you were talking about going to counseling. That woman can lose the weight just... Just like you said, that man can go to counseling and deal with those issues. That woman can lose weight and deal with her issues. But the point of reference is that she's not going to counseling and dealing with her issues. She's going to have to take whatever man she can get. You know? And the issue at hand is if that man is not pleasant or he's not, you know, loving to her, that's something that she's got to deal with. She can't say that, oh, you know, take me as I am. But the point of reference is if if he don't want her as she is, or he's not invested in her, he's not gonna deal with her the way she is. You know, and a lot of a lot of women want to have men to come at them when they're in their state of mind or when they're in their, you know, I guess purpose or things. But what you know, when it comes down to it, you have the women that deal with men who've been to jail. You have women that deal with men who do like pretty much deal with other stuff too. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing with men. Men, some men deal with women that are big. Some men don't. But the point of reference is, when it comes down to it, it's all about what that what that woman and what that man is getting out of that deal. Mm-hmm. If that man is feel like over time she's not going to lose that weight, she's not going to keep herself stable. He's not dealing with her, you mm-hmm. know. Because like I said, you would have to be invested in a woman, you know, as far as a relationship to say, you know, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to get something out of this. You know, Mm -hmm. this woman at the same time, she's a good woman. She has a couple of flaws, but, you know, I'm okay with that because I love her. I'm going to be with her. I don't care how big she is. That's that man who's invested in that woman. If that man don't see a future or some type of investment with that woman, he's not going down that aisle. He's not even entertaining the notion of them being together. And see, a lot of women, it's almost as if you're trying to force these men to deal with these women why force them if they don't want to be with women that it in life right now it's all about choices you know and these 50 some guys 50 percent of guys who are not married and single and stuff like that their choice is most of them want to get married and most of them don't Mm -hmm. because you got to understand most men have been dealt a bad hand you know do you think that the guys that are on kevin samuel's show They're on there just to hate women all because? No, there's reason. Most guys have been played by women. Most guys have, you know, pretty much. The Manosphere was created on the premise of a lot of women treating men wrong. You know, because like I said, the women that had sons, they were the ones that were raising these men to be husbands. But the point of it was, they was teaching them from a woman's standpoint on you taking care of that woman and listening to what that woman got to say. You know, there was no point of him trying to lead because that young man never seen leadership, but from his mom. Mm-hmm. So when it was time for him to lead, the, the woman would always pretty much ultimately lead and she'll be complaining, oh, you're not manly enough and this and that. But look at his environment. Look how he was raised. Even if his dad was alive or his dad wasn't even in the picture to the point, like, how can you expect a man to be more? Then you know what he pretty much was raised in his environment. You know, if only thing he knew was his mom, it was his mom goal to put him in the mindset of men to mm-hmm. where he can be a man and grow. Now, if he's not around men, how can a man be a man if he's not around men? Because you know? see, for for as for an adult man, 
mm-hmm. it's on him to go and find adult mentors. Once yeah. he becomes an adult, he needs to find a man that can help him, that can help strengthen him in the areas that he's weak in, especially if he grew up without a dad. And the fact that he grew up late. without a dad, hmm? that's going to be almost a little bit too late. That's like trying to get a, that's like trying to get a person that's in their twenties to learn how to read. It's going to be a struggle until they actually get to that point. And that's what most men are facing that struggle. But and you they, don't think when those women are taking advantage of those men while they're struggling, trying to find their mentors and trying to find themselves. Now, I don't think that most men are, to be honest, I don't think that most men are actively out trying to um, re- trying to correct the things that that weren't, um, you know, appropriate in their childhood. I see a lot of men complaining and just saying, OK, well, I wasn't raised with a dad. I was raised in a single parent household and therefore I struggle with with having healthy relationships and never go out to kind of try to reset themselves and learn how to have those healthier relationships. I, I just don't see it like that. I, I don't see many guys, you know, actively seeking mentors or talking about mentoring other young men. And just to mention one thing about the the weight thing, that was just one example. My point was is that the 53% of black men that are single are throwing away perfectly good women that 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 could be good mothers and wives but they throw them away for trivial reasons you don't have to date a heavy woman if you don't want a heavy woman you know there's a single fit woman too that you're overlooking because like you said she maybe you just don't want to be married or maybe you just don't want to be in a relationship but if 53 percent of the men in our culture don't want to be in a relationship or don't want to be married there is an issue there and it's bigger than a woman being heavier or a woman wearing weave or whatever. I just see a lot of men making excuses and not really going out and proactively trying to find ways to correct things that weren't so great in their childhood or in their formative years. Okay. When it comes to that, you got to understand this. Okay. Let's say a man tries to talk to a woman. Ultimately, if a man doesn't look the par, women are not trying to talk to them. You said it earlier. If a man you don't like, give him a fake number. Mm-hmm. Now, that could have been her potential husband, even though he didn't look good or he he just asked her out and, you know, that wasn't her type. So basically, if men keep doing this to try to, you know, connect with women or have a relationship with women that don't want to be with them, they're holding themselves for a particular type of man. That's what mm-hmm. most women are doing. So just like you're saying that a, book, a big woman or another type of, you know, slimmer chick could be that man's uh, wife, the same thing reverse for that woman. She won't give a man a chance because he looks goofy or, you know, he, he works in construction. He doesn't have a corporate job. So mm-hmm. it, it works on both ends. You know, when when you're telling when, when you're telling men that they have to pick women of a certain caliber to give them a chance, same thing with the women. How many how many men have shot their shot and been shot down? There, there's a saying with most men, you know, you shoot a hundred average, you might hit one or two. That's how many how many men have always there's there's some men that don't even talk to women because they've been rejected so horribly. You know, I knew this one guy in elementary school. He tried to talk to a girl and she told him he looked it weird. This guy, I I, I knew this guy all the way from elementary and like he played like just games, like just like play video games and he liked comics. This guy was so dorky all the way to middle school. And, you know, we started getting into girls like young, third grade and trying to get girlfriends. This guy would never try to get a girlfriend. And everybody always looked at him as the weird kid. Even when he tried to talk to a girl, they would always say, you weird or, you know, you different. So it got to the point where this guy just shut down and didn't talk to females, you know. And those women condemned him like that. It, it wasn't it wasn't the point that he, you know, he probably wasn't their type by looks. But because he, he played games and he had weird, he didn't smell different or nothing. It just that none of the women 
were interested. Even the bigger women wasn't interested in him. So what is that man supposed to do when no women want to talk to him? Is he supposed to stay to himself or force himself on women? He can't force himself. So he has to stay quiet as kept to himself. But you know? I just find it hard to believe that that it's that difficult for that many men to meet one woman. And maybe um maybe um maybe some women you know, who may be prettier or younger or whatever might have their preferences set as to where they are. But those quote unquote average at best women that black men don't feel are good enough make perfect wives, but they don't see them as qualifying because they, they aren't the Instagram model look or the supermodel look. And, and, and that's where the men are falling short as well. So, you know, I just, I just see, I just find it hard to believe that those men who are, you know, family oriented, traditional minded, have put in the work so that they can lead and fund a household, have a, a hard time finding a quality woman, especially 53% of American black men. I find that so difficult to believe. I just think that they don't want to. And in order to not feel like they're less than and saying that they don't just want to, they simply don't want to, they make all of these excuses as to why it's impossible. Okay. That's what I, I think. I really don't want to say the guy's name, mm -hmm. but pretty much we've been on his show before and this guy want to get married to a black woman. His show is basically based around dealing with black women. But the whole point of it is he, I think he's in his 40s and he's not married. He's tried to deal and date with several women. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, it's always an issue that he has with most of the women. You know, he even referred to one of the issues where he was dating a chick and she was talking about his, you know, house, like his apartment. He said he, said he knew his apartment sucked and she preferred this apartment being bad. So he kicked her out. Mm hmm. And, you know, that was a woman that he could have potentially probably got married to. But the point of it is she didn't value what he had like it was trash, mm -hmm. you know, and more and more men are trying to deal with women or trying to have a relationship with women. And they're always going through this same issue. Most men are not good enough for those women. So what what happens to those men who try to get married and try and it gets to a point where they say, well, I've tried several women. I'm just going to be to myself. Because be honest, I'm tw I was 25 when I got married to my wife. I wanted to get married young because I wanted kids young. I wanted to establish a family early in life so I can plan more things for my life. I, I have a set goal to how I want to pursue certain things. And that's why I wanted to get married early in my 20s, which it took me to 25 to get married. My wife is four years older than me. Now, before my wife... I think I married her with like close to a year. But before her, I pretty much thought I was just going to be single. Like, it was two chicks I was messing with before her. One of them was uh, the big chick I was messing with. And then another one, she was, a, she was a little, she wasn't that big. But the whole point of her, she had a nasty attitude. Like, she was real pleasant to me, nice to me. But we went to a restaurant and she went off on a waiter so bad. And I'm like, who are you? And, and that's when I seen a different side of her to the point where I don't know if that's going to reflect and come out on me one day. So I wasn't taking my chances, you know, with, uh, what's, I forgot the lady, um, my Angelo or somebody who say when a person show you who they are, believe them, you know, that's how I felt about her. Like you literally turn into another person over your broccoli and your chicken being cold. Mm hmm she literally stuck her finger in the potatoes like, this is cold. Take it back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa. Like, like it's not her fault. She had to easily could have just said, I'm sorry, but I don't want this because it's cold. Could you warm it up or make me something else? Or even as quiet as kept. Like I told her when we start going to the restaurant, make sure you tell the waiter because I get steak or something that if you get fish or chicken, yours might get done a little faster than mine. So just tell them to bring your food as it as it gets prepared, not to wait for everybody at the table. So mm -hmm. generally you have hot food. 
Mm-hmm. And we start doing it, you know, when we start going out. But the whole point of it was, like, that one time, I think it was the second time she did that on a date. And I was like, whoa, that's that's not cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I agree. I agree. And, like, just like men are, um, you know, men are in charge of how they show up in relationships. Women are in charge of how they show up in relationships as well. And if, you know, you guys don't mesh well, then, you know, meet another person. You know, but to just rest on the thought for a woman or a man that, you know, there is not one person, you know, that meets your standard to me is just like, you know, excuse making. I think that um, I think that you definitely should be able to exercise your preference and date people that you are attracted to and you don't need to make any type of concessions or anything like that. But to just say Excuse me, but to just say that every woman in the category of women that you are attracted to aren't eligible to be a long term partner for you is not honest. That's not a honest statement. In I'm, gonna my- blow your mind. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm gonna blow your mind in two things. Like, mm-hmm. My wife, for one, my wife is short, she's slim. My cup of tea is thick and tall. I like taller women. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm five I'm five eleven. My wife is uh five four. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm about I think about two seventy five. I'm losing weight now because my weight, like, but I'm two seventy five, five eleven, and I'm mm-hmm. pretty big if you look at me. Mm-hmm. My wife, she's like one thirty, uh, probably I I say one forty or so, but she's five four and she's losing a little weight. Mm-hmm. You know, but the point of it is, I like taller, bigger women. Mm-hmm. That's that wasn't my cup of tea, but you know, like I said, she was a nice person. She talked nice, you know. She she got two kids. Like mm-hmm. I tell most people, like I married a woman with two kids versus marrying a single woman, you know, and that's crazy to the point where all the single women that were available, I couldn't connect with them. I had mm-hmm. to connect with a woman that was had two kids, mm-hmm. you know, and and that's strange within itself. Not really, and not really from what I see. Most women that have children um, are like they get into relationships. They're easier to be in a relationship with than a woman that didn't have children, and that that has been my own experience too. My relationships were different after I became a mother than before I was a mother. It was like very different. So I understand how that could have happened for you. But the thing is, is that you are married because going back to what I said in the beginning, you are married because you chose a woman of good character and somebody who meshed well with you, regardless of if she met that checklist of standards that, you know, a lot of us kind of run off to other people. Mm -hmm. And I use weighted as an example, but we can use the fact that she had children. We could use her height or whatever the, the variable is and really talk about the fact that she didn't meet the standard of what you thought you would be going after but she still made a good wife and you saw past the superficial part of it and made the commitment to making her your wife and the 53 percent of black single men can also do the same thing but they don't want to it's a choice that they're making intentionally and then making excuses and blaming it wholly on the woman instead of saying listen i'm just not marriage minded listen i just don't know how to have a healthy relationship listen i never prioritize family and 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 keeping it real instead of cutting black women down and saying all of y'all are fat all of y'all are ugly all of y'all are baby mamas and yada 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 when a fat ugly baby mama you know as a hypothetical could still make a good wife for a man who was looking for a good wife a lot of these men are not looking for good wives and they keep trying to make the excuse or blame or deflect or make the reason be the woman as to re- as to why they're single when in reality they're single because they want to be single and they should say that when I talk about the um, when I talk about the 
culture of the black American male, the black American male has a culture where they don't value family, women, children, and marriage. That's just what it is. Uh -huh. And like, we got to be honest about it. If we want to change it, we got to be honest about it. Black American men do not value getting married. That's why 53% of them are single. Not because they are, there aren't viable, eligible women out there, but because they don't have a value for it. I want to I want to refer you to this, okay? Because I'm I'm actually being pretty light about the situation, but um, Kevin Samuels always have the women that come up. How many women come on his show, literally talk about how they've been proposed to two, three, and four times? Those women then want to be with those men that are at that fifty-three mark, because those men try. You know how hard it is to go. Put your heart out to a woman and she say no or accept your ring, but don't get marry you because you're not where she wants you to be. You know, your ring might have been bought was too small. You didn't get what she want. She's not in control of you the way she want to be. So essentially, she doesn't want to be with a man she can't control or she doesn't want to be with a man that doesn't make a certain amount of money. You know, there are several men that propose to women. They just don't go. They don't they don't go all the way through with it because. Most of the women break off and most of the men be like, well, you're changing. You know, there was a guy who was on the panel. He said it himself. Like, as soon as he proposed this woman, she changed on him. She, she already acted like she was married, trying to tell him certain things he needed to change about himself and what she ain't going to do. And, like, those, these are the men that are at 53 that you're talking about, that they tried to marry a woman, and she said no. These are the men that you're talking about that try to be uh, in those relationships. I mean, there's a lot of men that actually, like you're saying, that try to deal with these women that have weight. How many men you see on Instagram or they always say about fat and skinny? There, there's a lot of bigger women that, that date smaller guys. Down here in the South, they're rampant. I mean, I know you one hour back, so I don't know if you up top, like in Chicago area or where. Mm -hmm. In the South, there's a lot of men that date big women down here. You know, a lot of those big women have that conceited mindset, just like the, the, the slimmer, prettier women, because men are messing with them. Because all the men that always say they don't like big women, they don't like ugly women, how many big women have kids? Mm -hmm. So that shows you that what they say is false, you know? Vagina is vagina in most cases when guys want to sleep with them. Mm -hmm. And if they have an oops baby, then that's 18 to 20 some years they're dealing with that woman. So mm -hmm. the point of it is most of those women, you know, they probably want to just have sex and most of them they probably want to get married to. But it depends on that woman. See, that woman has to make that commitment when she keeps relieving herself from not being with men. There have women have what three and four proposals and they never got married. Mm -hmm. And you think that's not an issue that Kevin has to, you know, argue them down why you never married the man, why you never married your baby dad. There was a woman that was on his channel that married her baby daddy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that married her boyfriend from high school, had mm -hmm. three kids with him, and ultimately she broke up with him because she said she was young and dumb. Mm -hmm. This guy still comes to the house, take care of the kids. Take care of her. The tire goes flat. He comes fix it. Something wrong with the kid. He come over there and discipline him. Mm -hmm. Why did they even get a divorce? And Kevin told her to crawl back to her man because she said she can't find a man. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, I want a high value man, but I can't find a man. He's like, you got three kids. Your mm -hmm. husband still do everything for you. Why not go back to your man? You know what's mm -hmm. her answer? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, well, these are the women that you're trying to defend that, no. like, if it's bad. I'm not I'm not defending any woman. I don't know their personal behavior, like in their choices and stuff and what they are doing. And in my video yesterday, I did say that I supported some of the things that Kevin has said and some of his perspective or whatever. My issue comes up with the violent rhetoric and I'm just not going to be moved from that. Um, I feel like it is so dangerous that it needs to be like monitored in some type of way um because not just because you know it's something that he's like 
not just because it's him individually, but it's because of the people who hear his words and go out and commit those actions against other women. Right. And I, I just can't be shifted from that. Now, there are some women that call in to his show and, you know, they, you know, don't make any sense. And I understand what he's saying and where he's going and talking to them. Um, but, you know, that's like another side to it. You know, not every woman is a wife and not every woman wants to be a wife. And you can't force those women to be wives. You just have to be um, competent enough to choose a wife. And if that woman doesn't want to be a wife or your wife, then find a woman who does because there are a good number of women who are interested in marriage and ready to be married today. You just need to think you just need to be able to choose one. And a lot of guys are 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 resting on their bad experience with one of those women and taking out all of the other women from, you know, consideration. And 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 they should be honest about that. And I don't think that a man should settle for any type of woman that he don't doesn't like. Um somebody in the chat said, you know, that men should have to be with disagreeable women, I don't agree that they should have to be with disagreeable women. What I was saying is that all of us have a checklist, right? I'm like you were talking about your height. I'm five nine. My ideal height would be, you know, six feet. Six. I really like six three. That's what I really like. You know, six three is good for me because if I wear my heels, I'm still shorter than him and all of that type of stuff. But my husband is like five nine and five inches, <laughs> right? Like he says that he's like five ten or five eleven, but me and him are like. Forehead, oh forehead. Okay. <laughs> and when I put my heels on, like I'm taller than him. I don't even wear heels that much when we go out together because I don't want to, I don't want to appear taller than him. You know what I'm saying? But I still marry him because he's a good man. He's a good father. He's a good provider. He's a good leader for the household. He's a good leader for me as a woman and as a wife and he has helped me to become a better and more dynamic woman. So when we come into the dating market with this checklist of non-negotiables that are superficial, I think that's what's holding us back. And in order to say that, um, that we aren't married because of those things, you're going to have to acknowledge that you are intentionally discounting or not considering viable wives, viable husbands over a superficial checklist. It just is what it is. And like for you, if you didn't choose your wife because she had children or because she was shorter than you or whatever the situation would be, that would be part of that superficial checklist that we were throwing away a quality person over. And we should just be more honest about that. Yeah, I, I see. I think, TL, you keep missing the point or maybe you don't really understand like what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that good people are good people, whether they meet that superficial checklist. Like I would be it, it wouldn't make any sense for me to not marry my husband because he wasn't six, four, you know, like that wouldn't make any sense, you know. And if you choose not to marry a woman yeah, BGS. Hey, how are you? Okay. I think I heard you talking crazy today, but I don't know for sure because I didn't listen real good, but it's good to see you over here. But if I didn't marry my husband because he wasn't 6'4", that would be like crazy, you know? And if you out here are not marrying women because she's not tall enough or she's too short or she's too light or she's too dark or whatever, but you are throwing away women with good attitudes, women who can follow your lead, women who would make a good wife, women who would make a good mother, and you're single and you end up being single until you're 50 or 60 or quote unquote dying alone, and that's your thing. Like, that's your fault. And it's not because there are no good black women or no eligible black women or none of that type of stuff is because you are following your superficial checklist and you got to be honest about that. But y'all know what? I'm going to um, wrap it up um, and I'm going to give us five minutes, okay? Because I'm going to be in trouble. 
when I get downstairs, oh my goodness, because I was only supposed to be on here for 30 minutes or whatever. Um, I'm going to be in trouble, but I'm going to have us wrap it up for five minutes. And um, we're going to have a conversation tomorrow about whether women can recognize abuse. Abuse. That's what we're going to be talking about. All right. Um, but let's go ahead. and We have five minutes and let's wrap it up. All right. I'm going to wrap it up. All right, when it comes to, like I said, with the women, you, the women, they essentially... I can't hear you. You sound kind of far away. All right, so basically every every channel that most guys talk about, we talk about the behavior of women. You know, you, you're promoting that men need to get married to these women, but if their behavior is wrong, why marry them? Like I told you, most men have proposed to women and they've said no. So we're we're not going to be a, you're not going to be able to force men into a relationship with women who don't want to be in relationships. That's for one. And like I said, going back to the day where you were talking about men waking up, men just not waking up to be putting up with the bull crap with a lot of these women. That's why most of these guys are single. Like I said, at the end of the day, women want a fair share or they want a good deal. But the point of it is. Why not change? There's there's women who literally could been got married, but they don't want to conform to have a man leading them. So essentially, when they get older, that's when they want to go conform and have a husband. When you're in your 30s, like late 30s and 40s, who wants to marry an old person? Like I said, I always talk about this. I said, hot girl summers make old lonely winners. You can have your fun when you're young and be independent. I, I, I don't like when women say independent because when you're independent, 4th of July, our independence from another country. That's what these women are essentially saying when they say they're strong and independent. They don't need a man. But then how are you going to be strong and independent in a relationship? I mean, like I said, the point of it is if women want to get married, it's easy. All they have to do is be a little nicer, come to approach me that when they actually propose to them, take that proposal and marry them. Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, when it comes down to it, for women who want to get married, when the guy proposed, that's the best thing. If he's a good guy, take the ring. Whether mm -hmm. he's a construction worker or a six-figure guy, the point of it is women are opting out of the marriage and that's why men are opting out now because if you can't get what you want, you don't want to get married, why men can't do the same thing? But men can do the same thing. But what I'm saying is that what they want is also available. It might not be that one particular woman, but it can be another woman that is available. Okay. So and men, a man has to keep trying, trying, trying. 53% of men being single, like, no, stop the excuses. She cut it out. Just cut it out. Just cut it's it only, out, okay? Now it's only thirteen percent of good women, and like I said, out of the thirteen percent, eight percent get married. It's only the thirteen other, percent of good women out of a hundred. Out of a hundred, and eighteen uh, eight percent of them get married. Okay, stop, generally okay. speaking, stop. Percy. All these are all the women that actually that like the other women. These are the women that want to get married, but they want to get married to a particular man, or they just want to have hot girl summers. Because the thing of it is. You can easily marry a trash man, but he don't make enough money for you. It's one you could easily marry all kinds. Of, yeah, you need to go to bed. Me too. I know, so and y'all gonna have me in trouble. Oh my goodness. Well, that's that's between you and your man, cause uh, it's my house, so <laughs> <laughs> right. Nobody gonna, uh, nobody gonna get you in trouble. But let me say to Felicia, some people can. Hey, girl, and thank you so much for coming again today. Some people um want to have relationships. Some people don't mind having relationships with people who have children. You know, had children prior to their relationship, and that's just their choice. You know, I don't. Like I don't promote that, that with men. I mean, if you don't want to date a woman who have children, then by all means, it's a lot of single women with no children out here. Choose one of them. But just like Jess, hey, girl, said, um, you know, she doesn't necessarily have a physical type. In my opinion, that's the difference between a wife minded woman and a woman that is not, you know, necessarily looking for a husband or for a long term commitment. A woman that sees the, the character, the content, the quality of a man 
over, you know, that superficial checklist that we mentioned, you know, that's what you want. A woman that can see you for who you are in your value as your worth and not necessarily your physical attributes. Now, you should be a provider. You should be able to pay those bills. You should be able to prevent her. Pre- you should be able to um, give her that security that, you know, she's not going to be in poverty or whatever. But like we were saying, if you're not six four, that doesn't take you out the running to be a good husband. You know, what does, what does he get if he does all those things for a woman? What does he, he gets a, a good wife. He gets a woman like like Jessica said. Let me go back to her comment real quick. Why are you trying to get me in trouble, she? Okay. I'm just asking. What's a good what wife? Is you can go how, ahead and cut it because I'm she, just asking. She focuses on a man on how he treats her. Does he like women? Does he like people? Does he treat me well because he's a good person? So she gets a woman that sees the content of his character. She gets a woman to see that sees his true value and will return in kind. That's what he gets for all of that. He, That's the he thing. Can get all, he, can get all, get. he can get that without being married. That's what I'm asking. Like, what get he it get without being time? married. But if you are marriage minded, see. That's the thing with this 53%, in my opinion, and Black American men, y'all always want something in return for doing what is expected of you, right? Mm -hmm. A woman who Mm -hmm. has a child, right, she say, oh, well, what do I get for um, giving birth to a child and nurturing a child into an, an adult? Like, you are a mother. You get, you know, the payoff of raising your child. You are a man. You get the payoff of being the provider and leader of your household and you get the satisfaction of knowing that you are providing and leading for a household. She doesn't have to do any special (laughs) clips. She doesn't have to do any super, you know, great things to reward you for doing what it is that is expected of you. Black men need to stop expecting something in return for doing basic stuff. You are supposed to be a provider. You are supposed to be a protector. You are supposed to you know, provide security for the woman and child in your life. And that's just that. Like you the the thanks you get is being that. And that's my, that's my, enough. And then my, the icing on the cake is the the content and the character of the woman that you choose. If you choose a good woman, then you will have a woman who take care takes care of all your emotional and you know as many physical needs as she can take care of. But to expect her to be swinging from the chandelier and tap dancing for you just because you pay the bill, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. No, I don't want her to be that way, but you need to go to bed because you there should be a trouble. transaction. TL, you know what? I'm gonna beat you up because you just be talking crazy. <laughs> and and I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow, but um but I'm gonna be at, on the women's breakdown, um, on the breakdown of women's perspective on Sunday at 10 o'clock, and I'm gonna put make a new video and put the link in there and we are going to talk about this petition, okay? Listen, yeah. when this whole thing, like I said, Kevin is doing whatever he's doing. My issue comes in with the domestic violence stuff. That has been brought up and documented so many different times. So people like TL can stop coming in here and making comments saying that I'm lying about people inciting violence, okay? Because it just is what it is. Now, the option that we have is for people to stop talking crazy like that, okay? Yeah. But the truth is just what the truth is but we're going to talk about that more on sunday all right so tl if you come back tomorrow you know act right okay because you know better than that one all right okay so thanks for everybody for coming you know, hopefully my husband don't domestically discipline me you know when i get downstairs for being up here for more than 10 minutes 30 minutes like i said you know so if y'all don't see me tomorrow you know, know that he was domestically disciplining me, all right, and oh, yeah. knocked my teeth out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Are you gonna blame? Are you gonna blame Kevin Sims? Are you gonna yes, blame I yourself am. for being? Yes, are you I gonna do. blame yourself for being on there too long? That, no, you know? I'm, I'm gonna blame Kevin Samuels because it's other ways to go about it. But anyway, my man don't be listening to no dang on Kevin Samuels, okay? Because that'll be a whole nother issue, all right? But anyway, mm-hmm. good night. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, okay? Yeah. Thank you for everything, she. All right. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>